Women in Islam seem to be in the center of a lot of controversy. There is a common Western stereotype of the Muslim woman, hidden behind a veil, oppressed, voiceless, and in need of saving. But how accurate is this depiction? Is there systemic gender discrimination within Islam? As questioned by Laila Abulahud, do Muslim women really need saving? And why do Westerners feel the need to be the self-proclaimed saviors of these women? In order to begin exploring this topic, it is important to lay out some background information. Islam is a monotheistic religion that believes in the existence of one all-merciful and all-loving God, and that Prophet Muhammad is his messenger. The Quran, which is believed to be God's direct message revealed to the Prophet through Angel Gabriel, and the Hadith, the recorded actions and sayings of the Prophet, are essentially guidelines for how Muslims may live their lives. Islam started off with Muhammad teaching a small group of people in the Saudi Arabian city of Mecca, and rapidly spread through the Middle East, Africa, India, China, Europe, and soon the entire world. There are currently over 1.8 billion Muslims in the world, roughly 24% of the global population. They make up the majority of the citizens of 50 different countries, and it is the fastest growing contemporary religion the world has ever seen. So, why is this relevant? Islam must be understood and studied through the knowledge that each of these countries and societies have their own specific culture, historical formation, geographical locations, and political systems. Basically, things are different all around the world. You know, nobody I've ever met and worked with in these rural communities in Egypt or elsewhere ever envied Western women. They envied the lack of poverty that they thought existed. They envied certain kinds of things, but they were very happy to be Muslims. It was very important to them for their self-understanding, for their way of coping in the world. One of the ways that I think that moral crusade is authorized is through really the very the high moral ground of human rights, uh, international women's rights. There are these cultural legal categories that have been created through the UN, through uh, a whole range of means to give a name to certain kinds of violence. You can see it so clearly in Europe, again, where Germany, Scandinavia, there's been a huge production of the honor crime. And I think that feeds into a larger politics uh, and makes it believable and makes people feel morally you know, compelled to support certain kinds of interventions that they might not have otherwise. And so the question is, how can we see what we could do to make people's lives better elsewhere besides rescuing them from their cultures? Let's look at what we're doing that's making women's lives in Afghanistan so difficult. There isn't one specific way that women are treated within the whole of Islam. Women are treated differently and have different societal roles and upbringings throughout the religion in respect to where it is practiced. To group all of this diversity under one single category is a detrimental oversimplification of both Islam and Muslim women. Turns out it's not the same as a 15-year-old young lady. I very quickly became introduced to the cultural aspect of religion. The words haram, meaning religiously prohibited, and aib, meaning culturally inappropriate, were exchanged carelessly, as if they meant the same thing and had the same consequences. And I found myself in conversation after conversation with classmates and colleagues, professors, friends, even relatives, beginning to question my own role and my own aspirations. And even with the foundation my parents had provided for me, I found myself questioning the role of women in my faith. 
So at the Murabit School of International Affairs, we go very heavy on the debate. And rule number one is do your research. So that's what I did. And it surprised me how easy it was to find women in my faith who were leaders, who were innovative, who were strong, politically, economically, even militarily. Khadija, radiallahu anha, financed the Islamic movement in its infancy. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for her. So why weren't we learning about her? Why weren't we learning about these women? Take a piece of fabric, wrap it around your neck, and you'll get a scarf. Take that same piece of fabric, wrap it over your head, and you'll get judgmental stares. What is it that makes the hijab a symbol of oppression? Well, the answer to that is quite simple. Nothing. The hijab doesn't make women inferior, defenseless, or unfree. As Abu Lahoud said, veiling itself must not be confused with lack of agency. In fact, it symbolizes modesty, the cultivation of virtue, and the expressed desire to be closer to God in many different cultures. It is crucial to understand that women are far more than what they wear. What if I wore my scarf like this? I can walk down the street in the exact same outfit, and the, what the world expects of me and the way I'm treated depends on the arrangement of this piece of cloth. But this isn't going to be another monologue about the hijab, because Lord knows Muslim women are so much more than the piece of cloth they choose to wrap or not wrap their head in. This is about looking beyond your bias. All right, so you guys think you've got a good read on me. You kind of think you know what's up. Um, can you imagine me running one of these? Can you imagine me walking and be like, hey, boys, this is what's up. This is how it's done. Well, I'm glad you can. Because, ladies and gentlemen, that's my day job. And the cool thing about it is that it's pretty entertaining. Actually, in places like Malaysia, Muslim women on rigs isn't even comment worthy. There are that many of them. Although there is an obvious prejudicial depiction of Muslim women in the Western world, it is important to state that gender inequality does exist. However, this is not to blame solely on religion. The effects of imperialism, race theory, social class, culture, and gender need to be analyzed alongside religion to paint a more accurate representation of women's reality within Islam. In order to improve women's quality of life, it is important to provide equal education and opportunity, not just in Muslim-majority countries, but all over the world. There's a need to step away from prejudices and stereotypes and become avid listeners and critical thinkers. There's a need to become more understanding of cultural and religious diversity without ignoring the real and substantial issues the modern world presents. So, I'll ask you again, do women in Islam really need saving? Hi, I'm Sophie. I'm going to be interviewing you today. Hey, I'm Zina. So, do you feel like women are oppressed in Muslim-majority countries? I think that women all over the world are oppressed. I think that people forget that being a woman is also being a part of a minority. And wherever, whenever you're a minority, you're going to face oppression. So, yes. Are Muslim women in are Muslim women in Muslim majority countries oppressed? Yes. Are Muslim women in Western countries oppressed? Yes. It all depends on where and whom you're talking about. It also depends on your definition of oppression. Now, most Western people believe that Middle Eastern women who wear the niqab or the burqa or the hijab they're being oppressed because they feel like they're being forced to wear it. When in actuality, in most cases, it's the woman's choice. So. It really all depends on the context of oppression and whom you're talking about. Okay, so what differences do you see in American Muslim women and Middle Eastern Muslim women? I think that Middle Eastern Muslim women are more sure of their religion and they're not constantly be, um, rethinking it. Whereas American Muslim women, because of their environment and the people they're surrounding themselves with, they are in constant um, 
question of their religion and they want to understand they want answers and they want to know like is what they're believing right so i really just think that um uh, middle eastern muslim women they have more of a uh, sure belief in islam because they're not constantly surrounded with negativity about their religion makes sense so where does the idea of muslim women needing saving come from in your opinion I think the media likes to spin the fact that Muslim women are being oppressed all over just for attention, personally. It sells. Women being oppressed, it sells to the people. Like You want to hear about it, you want to learn about it, you want to fix the problem. America is always looking for a problem to fix. And in actuality, it's really not their problem to fix. And in a lot of cases, there really is no problem. So I really do think that the idea comes from a hunger to save something or save someone. We're always trying to be the heroes. We always want to do the good deed, and there are good intentions behind it, but do we really know what's going on, and do we really know what we're getting ourselves into? Makes sense. Thank you. No problem.